The Texas Code of Criminal Procedure mandates a peace officer who arrests a defendant on a warrant issued by a county other than the one where the peace officer works must get that defendant in front of a magistrate in his or her county or a nearby county without unnecessary delay. This requirement is fundamental to due process and ensures a defendant, especially one who is out of sight and out of mind of the county who issued the arrest warrant, isn't forgotten about. The Code of Criminal Procedure also sets forth specific due process requirements once a defendant arrives at jail after an arrest on an out-of-county warrant. Essentially, if a person is taken in front of a magistrate in a county who did not issue the warrant, so the arrest has occurred for an out-of-county warrant, there are three scenarios possible. The first scenario is the arrest warrant is for a B misdemeanor or higher offense, with bail listed and the defendant is able to post bail. So in other words, the offense could be a B misdemeanor or a capital felony or any felony or misdemeanor in between and the defendant is able to pay his bail amount to the county that arrested him. He then leaves their jail with instructions on where and when he needs to show up in the county which issued the arrest warrant. The second possibility is that the arrest warrant is for a C misdemeanor offense. As we know, a C misdemeanor offense is a fine-only offense. From a financial perspective, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for one county to spend a significant amount of time and resources feeding and housing a defendant and the county where the arrest warrant was issued to spend a lot of money driving across the state to pick up an inmate on a C misdemeanor warrant. The final possibility is the arrest warrant could be for a B misdemeanor or higher offense with either bail listed and the defendant is not able to post bail or it is a no bond warrant. So in other words, the offense could be a B misdemeanor up to a capital felony and the defendant is not able to pay his bail amount to the county that arrested him and leave their jail with instructions on where and when he needs to show up in the county which issued the arrest warrant. That defendant is sitting in the jail of the county where the arrest took place waiting for the county who issued the arrest warrant to come and get him. So once again, our three possibilities covered by the Code of Criminal Procedure for an arrest on an out-of-county warrant are, first, an arrest warrant for a B misdemeanor or higher offense with bail listed and the defendant post bail, so bail has been paid and the defendant will be leaving jail soon. Next, an arrest on a C misdemeanor warrant. And finally, an arrest on a B or higher warrant with no bail or bail is listed but the defendant can't make bail. In other words, the defendant is staying in jail. In the first scenario, a B misdemeanor or higher and the defendant is going to make bail or bail is listed and the defendant makes bail, the Code of Criminal Procedure states, the magistrate before whom they appear shall, again, on any offense other than a C misdemeanor, take bail and immediately transmit the bond to the court having jurisdiction. This makes sense on many levels since the defendant is ultimately responsible to show back up in court in County X and we also wouldn't want County Z to hold on to money that County X really should be holding on to. The second possibility is a defendant is arrested on a C warrant from outside of the county. The Code of Criminal Procedure states, the magistrate before whom the defendant appears shall, again in the case of a C misdemeanor, accept a written plea of guilty or nolo contendere which is no contest. So the magistrate may not accept a not guilty plea. If the magistrate accepts the plea of guilty or no contest, the Code of Criminal Procedure states the magistrate may set a fine, determine costs, and accept payment of the fine and costs, give credit for time served, determine indigence, or discharge the defendant as permitted. If accepting a plea of guilty or no contest on an out-of-county warrant for a C misdemeanor, the magistrate shall transmit to the court having jurisdiction the written plea, any orders entered in the case, and any fines or costs collected in the case before the 11th business day after accepting the plea. So again, this makes sense. Essentially, counties trust each other to dispose of C misdemeanor cases on each other's behalf, but the records and fine the defendant pays rightfully belongs to the county that issued the warrant. As a side note, the Code of Criminal Procedure states, closed circuit television may be used and specifies this article does not apply to an arrest made pursuant to a capious profine. The final possibility is the defendant is arrested on a warrant for a B misdemeanor offense or higher and there isn't a bail amount listed or it is a no bond warrant. 
The Code of Criminal Procedure states, If this is the case, the magistrate shall inform the defendant of the means to request counsel of indigent, ensure reasonable assistance in completing forms, and transmit the request and forms to the county that issued the warrant without unnecessary delay, but no later than 24 hours. Once again, this is a due process safeguard. If you're arrested in Houston on a warrant out of El Paso, it's probably going to be a few days before El Paso comes to get you. This section of the CCP ensures you have access to and are represented by an attorney as soon as possible. If, in this same situation, an arrested person fails or refuses to give bail, they shall be committed to the jail of the county where they were arrested, and the magistrate will immediately provide notice to the sheriff of the county in which the offense was committed regarding the arrest and commitment. This can be done by either telegraph, mail, written means including secure fax, or other secure electronic means. The magistrate must also communicate to the sheriff whether or not the defendant was also arrested under a parole warrant. This is designed to make sure the county who issued the arrest warrant doesn't forget about the defendant who is out of sight and out of mind and housed in a jail across the state at the financial expense of another county. In a similar sort of manner, the Code of Criminal Procedure wants to make sure any defendant arrested on an out-of-county warrant who had to be taken to a magistrate in the next county over isn't forgotten about by the arresting county. The CCP states, if a defendant is taken before a magistrate in a county other than the county where the arrest was made, the defendant may be kept in the jail of the county where the magistrate serves for no longer than 72 hours before being transferred to the jail of the county where the arrest occurred. The sheriff receiving notice of the arrest and commitment of a defendant in a county other than the county where the arrest took place shall forthwith go or send for the defendant and have them brought before the proper court or magistrate. This may seem sort of confusing because with the advent of the automobile, in most cases it doesn't take too terribly long to get from one county seat to the other. But think about when the Code of Criminal Procedure was written, as well as some of the more spread out rural areas of Texas. The Code of Criminal Procedure is saying, if, for whatever reason, a defendant who is arrested in County Z on a warrant from County X, but for whatever other reason has to be taken to a magistrate in County Y to fulfill the requirement to get him in front of a magistrate, then the arresting officer from County Z can leave him, if need be, in County Y's jail for no longer than 72 hours. The Sheriff of County Z has to, upon receiving notice from the magistrate in County Y, come and get the defendant and bring him back to County Z or risk being in violation of the Code of Criminal Procedure. Finally, in any case, if the county where the offense is alleged to have been committed, after receiving notice, does not take charge of the defendant before the 11th day, the magistrate in the county where the person was arrested shall release the defendant on a personal bond, otherwise known as a promise to appear, and forward the bond to the court or the sheriff of the county where the warrant originated. So in other words, if the county that issued the warrant doesn't come and get the defendant within 11 days, the county where the person was arrested will release the defendant on a personal recognizance bond and forward that bond to the county that issued the warrant.